So we're going to look at uh, what matrices we use to change the basis from, from one coordinate reference frame to, to another, or rather from, from one basis to another. Um, and rather than do it by uh, proofs straight off, I'm going to do the whole thing by example first because the notation is sort of horrible. So let's take uh, just a basic transform on uh, R2 to keep things nice and simple. And we'll say, uh, we'll do orthogonal projection to some line. Um, and so we'll take the, uh, the span of um, 3, 1 in the standard basis. So to describe this projection, we'll use coordinates um, 3, 1 for the thing we're projecting to. And then for something orthogonal to it, I'll take minus 1, 3. And we'll use that as our basis. So then let's see what we've got. So on the one hand, we will have some vector a1, v1, plus a2, v2. And then we'll be applying the transformation to it. And t of v is just going to be a1, v1, because the projection kills off the, the second coordinate there. And so in terms of matrices, we'll have um, m, v1. So the matrix of this vector, so the coordinates look like a1, a2. Um, so this is this arrow here indicates uh, taking the, the, the matrix of it. Um, and then we're going to multiply by some matrix. Uh, let's call it M. And so this is going to be the matrix of the linear transformation. Um, <coughs> And actually, let me back up. This is going to be the matrix of the linear transformation with respect to this v1, v2 basis. And so what we're going to get is that um, when, when we apply this matrix to a1, a2, it should have the effect of uh, projecting it to the first coordinate. So just giving us a1, 0, because that is the matrix of TV, right? And so without thinking too hard about it, you see that the matrix that has to go here is 1, 0, 0, 0. So what we found is that the, the matrix of T with respect to this sort of naturally chosen basis uh, is just this very simple thing, 1, 0, 0, 0. OK, so <clears throat> now let's look at what happens when we multiply a particular vector. So let's say, let's take some point V, which has uh, coordinates 2, 1. So that means it's 2, V1 plus V2. All right. So then let's draw some uh, axes going on here. And um, let's see. So I've got some line here. So if this is 1, 2, 3, 1. OK, so here's uh, what V1 looks like. And then um, I've got some uh, that doesn't look very orthogonal. That looks a little more orthogonal. OK. Yeah, I like it. All right, OK. And, and so then that's our V1 and that, whoops, wrong tool. Uh, that's our v2. And so we're looking at this point 2v1 plus v2. So that means I guess we go out 2 on the v1 axis and 1 on the v2 axis. So uh, let me just swap here to this one. And, or actually, um, oh, I'm no good at drawing in a hurry. OK, so we'll take this guy. And we'll take this guy and make them dotted. And let's see, so boom, oops, boom. Okay, 
so I have just located my point right here. So this is V. And then um, when I apply this transformation, come on, you little jerk. There we go. Uh, when I apply this transformation, it's going to get sent by orthogonal projection to this one here, TV. So this is uh, 2V1, and this is 2V1 plus V2. OK, now in terms of uh, where we are in the standard basis, um, let's see. So putting together the uh, vector arithmetic for 2V1 plus V2, we see that this is the point 5, 5. Well, I guess my picture is a little not to scale. Oh, well. Um, so this 5, 5 here, this is the uh, matrix of V with respect to the standard basis, which I'll denote by E1, E2. And this one here is going to be uh, 6, 2. So that's the matrix of TV with respect to the standard basis um, E1, E2. OK. And let's see. So what's going on with this picture here? So um, let's take uh, uh, x is going to be our notation for the matrix of v in respect with respect to this this v1 v2 basis so it has coordinates uh, 2 1 that's the point we start with before we apply the transform and um, then we'll also take the uh, matrix for um, uh, b to be this matrix with columns v1 and v2 or I guess, strictly speaking, that should be the matrix of V1 and the matrix of V2. But um, you know what I mean? And it'll look horrible if, if I try and write all that in there. So this is uh, the one that's got 3, 1, negative 1, 3 as, as columns. All right. OK, so let's see what we've got then. So on the one hand, um, we, we have uh, 2 V1 plus V2. And so as a matrix product, uh, this looks like um, 2, 1 times uh, this guy here, V2, V1. Because when you multiply a matrix against a vector, you get a linear combination of the columns of the matrix with coefficients given by the vector. Right, so on the one hand, we have that. And then on the other hand, we know that this um, uh, is going to give us 5, 5 uh, in the other coordinate. So this is 5e1 plus 5e2, where e1 and e2 are the standard basis. right? So that's the same thing as um, e1, e2 times 5, 5. And, and that's because um, this here is just actually the identity matrix, which is what it's supposed to be. OK, so let's see. So from this, this equation here between um, B21 and 5, 5, um, let's see. If we multiply across by the inverse, then we see that V1, V2 inverse times 5, 5 is going to give us 2, 1. And so now if uh, we look at what happens when we uh, apply the transformation, then we're going to have uh, this same thing. But now we're going to be multiplying both sides by the, the matrix of the, the, the transformation here. So we've got um, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0. And again, one zero 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 okay and so that gives us two zero okay so that's the coordinates of the projected point in the v1 v2 basis 
And so now we'll take the um, uh, same thing again here. Oops, dang it. Okay, um, and let's see, we've got a copy of this guy as well. Um, and then we're going to need to multiply this one by that same V1, V2 on both sides in order to re-express it in terms of the V1, V2 coordinates. So this gives us uh, two V1, right? So, or actually maybe I'll, I'll describe what you would get from, from uh, multiplying in with the actual coordinates which would be 6, 2. And so we'll call this vector y here. And so that's um, going back up here. This is our y. And let's make this uh, 5, 5 here. That's going to be, um, we'll call that c. OK. OK, so now we've gone through this this whole process here and we can see that this thing that we've collected right here this is the matrix of the transformation um, in the standard basis because it's telling us if we if we look at the standard coordinates for this this point v and we multiply it by all this then we get the standard coordinates 6 2 for the output result Right, so that big product of three matrices is the matrix that's taking us from here to here. All right, so now let's put this back together in more general terms and, and see what we're doing. So on the first step here, we started with um, Bx equals C. That's, that's our um, 5, 5 in, in this example. So. I'll put that stuff in blue for the specific example, and the rest will be um, actually generalizable. And so then the next thing we did is we multiplied both sides by um, uh, B inverse. So we had B inverse C equals X. And then we multiplied this further uh, by B M. And so that corresponds to what we saw here, and that gave us y, the output. So we had y here. Um, and now looking at this equation that, that we've got, um, <coughs> this is saying that, uh, so if we translate this all in, into the terrible uh, matrix notation, b is the matrix, oh, sorry, um, this this quantity right here, this one, uh, what we found is that that gives us the um, matrix for T in the standard basis. And then C was the matrix for V in the standard basis. And then Y was the matrix for uh, TV in the standard basis, right? Okay, so this this is a, a, just a translation of this uh, uh, thing that I found in the previous step here. So yeah, here, so this is, this part is C, and this part is y. Okay, so then that tells us that um, the um, the matrix for the transformation in the standard basis is B M, and M was the matrix for the transformation in the V one V two basis be inverse. Okay. So <clears throat> now if we take uh oh 
one one other thing first so so what is b so b here is well let's take a think about it um if i look at the matrix b so that was uh v1 v2 uh, and i multiply it against 2 1 then i get 5 5 but in this picture here uh, these these guys here are both representing the same point uh, this one that we're calling V uh, back here on the axes so that means that um, <coughs> B is the matrix of the whoops since this is the same point it hasn't moved anywhere it's just changed names it's actually the matrix of the identity transformation, but the identity transformation that goes from the V1, V2 basis to the E1, E2 basis. Aha. Okay, so now for, uh, if we take, whoops, A to be the matrix of the identity transformation going the opposite way, so from E1, E2, to v1, v2. Um, so this that is then going to be uh, the inverse matrix of B. Then that gives us um, that the matrix of the transform in the E1, E2 basis is uh, A inverse times the matrix of the transform and the V1, V2 basis times A. Okay, and then that matches the notation of the book in the statement of theorem 10.7, which we've almost sort of kind of proved through this discussion, but I'm, that's as close as I'm gonna get to giving you a real proof. And so the, the key point is that uh, E1 and E2 could have been any coordinates um, and any basis I just chose the standard basis system because it makes the coordinates a little easier to, to, to see. Uh, but in, in general, if we have uh, two bases, u1 through un, and v1 through vn, so if these are bases of v, um, and we take a to be the matrix of the identity. So this is a change of basis matrix, right? So A is the matrix that you multiply by to change the coordinates from the U1 basis to the U, uh, from the U basis to the V basis. Um, then, uh, the matrix of T in the first is A inverse times the matrix of T in the second times A. Um, so just a couple of observations here. First, this thing right here is often people say, um, that we've conjugated the middle matrix by A, so wrapping it by A and A inverse on both sides. Um, and then the other thing to notice is that um, if you want to convert to the basis uh, V1, V2, so like say you have a um, something in the standard coordinates and you wanna write down what its coordinates are for V1, V2, then the matrix you're interested in is you should multiply by the inverse of the matrix you get by throwing them into um, a, a matrix. Uh, 